I'm a jeweller. Um, I um, actually I have been trained as a goldsmith, so I come from a background of making jewelry and precious metals using goldsmithing techniques. And over the years, I um, started to get interested in the, what it all means and our levels of interpretation in, in wearable crafts objects. How do we read objects? How do we um, explore objects? I want to find representation for my concerns to, in the object as an art object. So it's my uh, levels of reflection. Or I make a piece of jewelry for somebody else who wishes to have a meaningful, decorative and precious object. Right now the research is very much about the levels of meaning in a decorative object. It does not necessarily need me to sit on the body, but it should have certain kind of qualities that are around the mm, the notion of the beautiful, uh, that it decorates, that it brings something refined and precious into our culture. So when it then shifts to meaning, it becomes really very interesting because your meaning and my meaning might be something entirely different and we might be talking about the same object. So how does this happen and how is this being done and how it can be verbalized? I am also still very much um, experimenting with new materials, new technologies as it, comes, um, as it becomes available to us, alongside ancient handmade, pro handmade processes like you know, very traditional goldsmithing techniques that have never changed in the last few hundred years. When the new library here in Birmingham um, opened, I was commissioned by Craftspace and we called it Story Meadow. And it was about migration. So people were asked to um, write on the white side of a piece of paper their story of how they came to Birmingham. And the other side of the paper was orange. And then together with my students, we taught them how to fold origami flowers from those pieces of paper. And then in these pieces of paper were oh, then flowers were strung up in garlands and hung together like a, a huge sort of. Um, but in the end, they were filling the space really, uh, sort of a, a huge three-dimensional curtain that was just orange flowers. And uh, over 2,000 people took part. It was incredible how much it was loved. So in the end, we figured out that people with 42 languages took part. This is just incredible. There were some dialects we've never heard about. We actually probably as individuals have more and more need for these sort of meaningful objects in our lives. So if you like, a, a project like this is wonderful to do, great fun. It's a communication project. You meet people you would never ever meet. You encourage, inspire people to make something together, even though they've never met each other before. And you learn a lot. I mean, 42 languages in Birmingham, that's just incredible. Thank you.